Today we are reminded to let the word of the Lord dwell in our hearts richly. Hi, my name is Keith and this is My Daily Walk. Today in My Daily Walk we're going to be going through uh, Deuteronomy again and I learned today that as we follow the commands of the Lord, He will bless us. But one of the things that we need to remember when we study the Bible is context. The who, what, where, when, and why. Because often we can take verses out of context and think that they're for us today when God was writing them at a specific time for a specific people. Now don't get me wrong, the Bible is for all people at all times. However, there are some promises and commands that are specifically said for a time when God wants them to be said. And so today, as we look at Deuteronomy, let's keep a couple of things in mind. First of all, we often find that people will take verses out of context. Let's just use one from Matthew, for example. There's a verse that says, where two or three are gathered, then I will be in their midst. Well, the thing is, is I will often hear people say, well, where two or three are gathered, you know, then God is with us. Or they will pray to the Lord and they will say, Lord, we know that where two or three are gathered, you are with us. Now, that is a concept and a principle that is true because we know that God is with you and me individually when we pray. So we don't have to say, Lord, we know you're with us when there's two or three of us because he's with us whether there's two of us, 10 of us, a thousand of us, a million of us, it really doesn't matter. The context of that verse is that where two or three are gathered in the name of the Lord in prayer when it comes to disciplining two people who have sinned against each other. And what it means is that if you have sinned against your brother and there's an account against you and someone else brings another account against you, then where those two or three are gathered together in unison in the Lord, he is with there in the decision, with them in the decision that they make. And so it's obvious that we have to be very careful in the context of the Bible when we quote scriptures. And today is no different. It is commands and blessings that are given to the people of Israel. However, there are principles for us as we read through these commands and we read through these blessings that we can say, wow, God is good and gracious and loving to his people. Today I'm going to be reading through several verses, um, kind of a big chunk of scripture. And so turn to Deuteronomy chapter 11. And we're going to be going through what, when God says, if you keep this command, this will be the blessing. And then he talks about how to keep those commands. So Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 13 through 25. And if you will indeed obey my commandments that I command you today to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart, with all your soul, he will give the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the later rain, that you may gather in your grain and your wine and your oil. And he will give grass in your fields for your livestock, and you shall eat and be full. So here we see a simple command. Love the Lord. Obey the Lord. Obey his commands. And then he will bless you with the rain for the fields and grass for the cattle. Israel was an agrarian culture. They were farmers. They knew that they needed to trust in the Lord for the sun and the rain and the good soil, that they could do things like plant seed and maybe add some things to the soil, but they knew that ultimately the growth of their crops would come from the Lord because they can't control the sun and the rain. And so God said to them at this time, if you love me and obey my commands, then I will bless you with good fertile soil. I will bless you with the sun and with the rain and with the things that you need in order to survive. And in verses 16 and 17, we see what happens if they disobey. Starting in verse 16, it says, Take care lest your heart be deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Then the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you and he will shut up the heavens so that there will be no rain and the land will yield no fruit and you will perish quickly off the good land that the Lord is giving you. Loving and serving God meant blessing. 
It meant that he would care for his people, give them the crops, give them the cattle, give them the things that they needed to survive. And disobedience meant death. If you look in that verse, it says, you will perish quickly. I know for me, when I even take one look at sin, it grasps my heart and mind and thoughts quickly. And so today I'm reminded, as I follow the Lord, I will be blessed. As I disobey the Lord, there will be curses. And what I love about the Lord is that he always gives you direction. So if we start in verse 18, it tells the people of Israel how they can follow after the Lord. It makes, he makes it very simple. So verse 18 and on, you shall therefore lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, and you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, talking of them when you are sitting in the house and when you are walking by the way, and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall write them on your doorsteps of your house and on your gates, and the days of the days of your children may be multiplied in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give them, as long as the heavens are above the earth. So the blessing of God came with a few directions. First, store the word of God in your heart. The next was bind them on your hands and then keep them as frontlets between their eyes. Teach them to the children and write them on their doorposts, houses, and gates. To make it simple, God just said, know my word, love my word, and follow my word. This reminds me of the New Testament verses in Colossians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. It says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So today we see even in Colossians that those who God blesses are the ones who follow after his commands and love him. If we look in the earlier verses in Colossians chapter 3, we get the why. And the why is so that we will be hidden in Christ through God. And we will be glorified with him. Let's look at those verses. Colossians 3 verses 1 through 4. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And then here's the real, um, the meat of the verses. This is the why. This is why we obey. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. So we follow after Christ because we have been saved and know that we will be glorified with him in heaven. We also know that obedience doesn't give us salvation. It's the other way around. When we faithfully trust in the Lord and we know that salvation is from grace and we walk knowing that there is nothing that we can do to be saved other than trust in him, then the fruit of that is our obedience. So obedience doesn't give us salvation. Salvation strengthens us for obedience. And the outcome of that is the salvation of our souls that we may be glorified with him in heaven. Now, isn't that worth it? Isn't it worth it to you and to me to be obedient to the Lord, knowing that we will have salvation in heaven with him? What a wonderful promise that is for us today. And if you're struggling today in trying to walk close to the Lord, just quit trying so hard. If you need prayer, then I just encourage you to pray to the Lord. Ask us for prayer. We will pray alongside you and just say, Lord, I don't want to try to obey in order to be saved. Lord, I, want, I know I'm saved. I just need a refreshment from you. I need your grace. I just need your strength and your power to walk each and every day faithfully in you. And so today, as we transition into our um, unreached people group and, and uh, pray for them, I want to encourage you to, again, pray for some folks that are living in Vietnam. They are the Kong people of Vietnam. 
And there's about, oh, 16,000 of them or so. And uh, there's approximately 80 individuals who know and love Jesus in this people group. So today, let's pray that those 80 people catch fire, that they catch a fire from the Holy Spirit, and that they move in a mighty way throughout their people, that they let others know of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that they can transform their community, their culture, and their country for Christ. And one last thing, Today in some Christian headlines, we find that there is a move of life going throughout this country. Now, this country kills millions of unborn babies every single year. It is a tragedy. And unfortunately, we have an administration that really supports the death of infants and babies before they're even born. But in Lubbock, Texas, over the last couple of days, they have passed laws saying that we no longer will allow the death of our unborn in our city. And so Planned Parenthood has now put a stop to abortions in Lubbock, Texas. Now there's a movement right now throughout many states in our country that are saying no more, enough is enough. We have seen that there is so much science that shows the moment a child is conceived, it is a unique individual, it has a unique DNA, and from just a few days to a few weeks, that child has so many factors and properties that say this is a unique individual. And now there's a lot of arguments as to whether or not that child would survive outside of the mother, but the reality is, is no child will survive without their mother. We need our moms, whether we're an infant, whether we're six weeks in the womb, or whether we're five years old. Moms are important and they're very important. So whether or not a child is inside the womb or outside the womb, that child will always need the mom. And so today we praise the Lord for the victory in Lubbock, Texas, where women are now having to take their children and no longer murder them. Praise Jesus for that. I know for me, that is a victory. I am a huge right to life person. As you probably know, we have adopted. And I pray that God will raise up godly men and women as they come and they see this news and they see the women who maybe were going to uh, abort a child, now adopting out a child, that they will be right in the front lines and say, we will help you, we will encourage you, and we will adopt your child and raise it for you. I mean, what better way to bring children into this world than through adoption? We were adopted as children of Christ. So let's pass that on and adopt and care for those children that we know are going to be brought into this world because hopefully this country eventually will ban this murderous deed and killing all these babies. So that's all I have for you today. I pray that you will pray along with us at Daily in Christ. The many things that we have that we're praying for today, uh, we're praying for the unreached, the persecuted church, Nigeria. Oh my goodness, there's so much going on over there. But most of all right now, pray for those people in Texas and pray for those young women who are pregnant, who feel hopeless, like we don't have anywhere to go. Pray that God will just pour his spirit into these women and the communities around them will support them and encourage them. So thanks again for listening. If you like these videos, remember to like, subscribe, and share them with your friends. But most of all, remember to walk daily in Christ. God bless you today.